good morning. Um, here to show you my bank of batteries for our 48 volt off grid or hybrid system that we have uh, that we're working on. And so I'm using Nissan Leaf modules and we're doing it in a stack of seven um, for each bank. So this is 48 volts. This one's 48 volts. And we're using the short uh, stack mount uh, that was used in the Nissan Leaf for the, for the short stack. So we got end plates and we have metal spacers that go in between each cell. And then you, here we're using all thread, but they had their own, their own thread and you run it through and you tighten it all down and you can tighten it good and snug and it won't over compress the batteries and it will hold them securely. And so that's what I'm working on today is to see how well that works. So we're gonna have two, two banks of 48 volts and then we'll parallel these ones. And I have enough hardware to do three double stacks. And I have like 90 of these here. And so what I did, and they're all holding a good charge. They're all well balanced. Um, so what I did is I set up a, a charger that I picked up. And the charger is just a, a little dinky thing, but it does quite well. This one is a this one is a boost and the other one's a buck. Um, but they're from the same company and it'll take a low voltage and kick it into a high voltage and you can charge up to 12 amps and it does a constant current constant voltage. There we should have a, a diode on the output because when you shut if you shut it off um, it's trying to feed back into, into this device, which I found out this morning. And so we need to stop that from happening from the, from the batteries. Um, get your little buttons for setting everything. And so I set the voltage because the voltage wasn't exactly a match to what the cells are. I had to put the voltage at 8.3, 8.4 for each module is the maximum. But because there were some line losses and all that stuff, it, these ended up at 8.27, and that's about right around where I wanted them to be. And so when this, this constant current, constant voltage, some of the bigger ones for charging big banks of batteries like this, they go down to like maybe two amps and then shut off this one goes all the way down to zero. So this is one thing I don't like about it. And the other thing I don't like about it is it, is it doesn't actually shut off. It just goes down to such a low amperage, it's not charging anymore. It just sits there. And um, so what I did is I have a bulk charger. And so I put, put these batteries in parallel with each other and then charged them all the way up to like 7.8 volts. And then I disconnected and then I hooked one of these up, my, my buck one that I have. And with my uh, power supply, I was able to um, buck that down to a lower voltage so it'll charge. And I charged these at, at 12 amps until they were, until the uh, amperage was down to zero and it was um, just about 8.3 volts, and then it went into the constant voltage, and then uh, current dropped down to zero. And so I did that with both these stacks here, and now I need to put them all together, and then we need to hook up the uh, inverter, and the inverter is a 15 kilowatt full sine wave um, low frequency inverter, and one of the charging algorithms, if I decide to hook it up as a as a um, grid tie system, where where it's going to be a hybrid, um, 
one of the algorithms for charging batteries matches exactly what I need to charge these. And that's the uh, AGM um, uh, the glass mat battery algorithm. And um, so we're going to test it just to be sure. So we're going to get everything hooked up, hook up a load, um, run it for a while, and then we're going to let it charge. And then we're going to see at what point it stops the charge. Um, we will be putting a, a BMS system on here to monitor the low volt, the, the lower uh, capacity battery, just to be sure that everything is safe. I don't know which one is a low capacity, uh, but I'm thinking we're, we're still going to be charging within, within a uh, safe range at the, at the top and also a cutoff, a safe cutoff at the bottom. And so I just wanted to show you what I'm, what I'm doing here. So I have a main, main plate, one of these guys on the bottom. And then I'll take one of these spacers and we'll put it on. And I just put the, the all thread in here just to kind of keep things lined up while I'm doing all this. And it's really an exact fit. And on this plate, I actually had to drill these little holes out just a tiny bit so the all thread fits through. They were not exactly that size. But the other pieces are working just fine. And so then this is a the smaller one. So one end is narrow and one end is wide for these mounting holes on this. And then we're going to stack another battery on it. And I'll bring you in a little bit closer to watch this. Let me go get a battery or a module. And since Nissan Leaf modules are alternating modules, they're not all, they're, they're, there's a right and left on these things, which is kind of crazy. That's how they did it. And that's just fine. So I'm just doing a little quick little cleanup here. So you can just kind of have a look at what you see in front of you there. It's been sitting in the garage for a while, figuring out whether I'm going to put them in a uh, electric car that I've been working on or for the uh, backup and I decided I think I want to use them for the backup system because I just have so many of them so you do have some miles on them so they're not a hundred percent you know they're not brand new but they're not super old either Okay, let's stick this on here. So the, the little uh, holes here, they have spacers in the holes. And the spacers don't always line up perfectly well. It makes it a little difficult to drop these into place. 
but most of them did. Most of them dropped in just fine. Could have gone with a smaller diameter on the all thread, but I wanted to go with something that was going to be almost the exact size that I needed. And so there you go. There's one. And then what you do is you take an end, an end piece here, and you put it on the end and drop that down now that creates it makes it level all the way across and then you take this one and do the same thing so now you've got a, a a solid platform that the next cell will sit on. So we'll grab another one. So if you look close, you can see that these alternate back and forth, yet the case is still exactly in the same orientation so they flip-flop these internally as what they did for the uh, for the car and it was designed really well but the problem is, is you can't break these cases down and split the pouches inside there that's it's an eight basically a fully charged is an 8.4 volt module and you can't fix you can't change that so then we'll line another one up and bang there's another one just like that set these on correctly put that in its place this one in its place and now we'll get the last cell or module this one happens to be a little slightly off kilter so might not go on as smooth, be a little noisy, but it'll go, it'll go on. And so I'll have enough for three sets like this, which will be like a 28, I'm calculating it at, at uh, 50 amp hour or so per module. So I'm figuring about 28, kilowatt hour 28 kilowatt battery pack the 28 kilowatt hour battery pack just like a little bit a little bit larger than what you'd find in the actual car and so have enough should have enough to do about six of these with the material with what I have on hand, but I have to get more end plates and spacers. So I'll have to look online for that. So there. So there's two 48 volt packs 
and then the next step and I put these things where the little bump in the middle is facing away and then here we can then line these up and the shape of these these become a spacer as well to fit in this you can see that there's a little lip here and so those just fit well, got to get all of them lined up got to get them all in the holes that would help And just like that and then the next step is to tighten these on so I'll bring these all threads up these are a foot well, let's basically let's see what we got here so 10 inches so these these all threads are 24 inches so I got plenty plenty of all thread to uh, cut these in half and build me another one but I still need some more spacers so this is how I'm going to do it so I'm going to have my positive leads on the outside on both of these